Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Hope you all are doing good. Today I'm going to talk about the accelerometers and trying to answer some of the questions like what are the accelerometers, what are the different types of accelerometers and what is the accelerometer sensitivity and why do we use a gender purpose accelerometers mostly and what are the factors that need to be considered while selecting an accelerometer and why and when to calibrate the accelerometers so let's get started here is the brief about myself i'm r shakti Bail. i'm a condition monitoring professional i'm holding a degree in mechanical engineering and i'm a certified chartered engineer from institute of engineers and i'm iso category 3 vibration analyst level 2 certified infrared thermographer as and t level 2 certified in ultrasound testing magnetic particle testing and dipenetrant testing we have a different vibration transducers for measuring the vibrations so we have a three different units for the vibration measurement we can measure the vibration in terms of acceleration or we can measure the vibration in terms of velocity or we can measure the vibration in terms of displacement so now let's see the transducers the first transducer is accelerometers so this accelerometer measures the vibration in terms of acceleration from the rotating machine components so the second one is velocity pickups so velocity pickups measures the vibration in terms of velocity from the machine components the third one is non-contact eddy current displacement probes so these probes mainly used for measuring the shaft vibration and frictional bearings or most of the turbo machineries so these probes normally measure the displacements the last one is shaft contact displacement probes which are the older methods of measuring the displacement by contact method so what do the accelerometers do as the name implies, the accelerometers are the sensors which provide the direct measurement of the acceleration. So it is the piezoelectric element in the accelerometers that produces a signal which is proportional to the accelerations. Accelerometers actually measure the absolute vibration unlike in the eddy current probes which measures the relative vibration the accelerometer measures the absolute vibration from the machine components so the accelerometers are the most common transducers in use today because of the various factors like so they are relatively inexpensive compared to the other vibration transducers and their frequency capabilities are much wider to take care of various uh, testing conditions and applications and so in accelerometers there are more development has been done and they can accurately measure both lower and higher frequency data to and also they can withstand the harsh environmental conditions there are various types of accelerometers that are being used for various purposes so basically the accelerometers are classified into ac response accelerometers and dc response accelerometers so ac response accelerometers are classified into charge mode piezoelectric accelerometers and voltage mode piezoelectric accelerometers so these according to the configuration these two accelerometers can be classified into uh, compression mode accelerometers or shear mode accelerometers and the DC response accelerometers can be further classified into capacitive types and piezoresistive types let's discuss briefly on all these types of accelerometers 
So A0 spun accelerometers, as their name implies, they are AC coupled, so they cannot be used for measuring the static accelerations such as gravity and constant centrifugal accelerations. So which makes it they are only suitable for measuring the dynamic events. The most common type of accelerometers use the piezoelectric elements for their sensing mechanism. So under acceleration, the seismic mass of the accelerometer causes the piezoelectric element to displace a charge which will produce an electrical output equivalent to that acceleration. So one type of the AC coupled accelerometer is the charge mode piezoelectric accelerometer. So the majority of the piezoelectric sensors are based on lead zirconate titanate ceramics. So which offer very wide range of temperatures and broad dynamic ranges and wide bandwidths up to more than 10 kilohertz. So when housed in the hermetic and welded metal case the charge mode accelerometers can be considered as considered as the most durable sensors because of their ability to tolerate the hostile environmental conditions so the one thing with this charge mode piezoelectric accelerometers are they need an external amplifier amplifier units so the another type is the voltage mode piezoelectric accelerometers which uh, we use most of our general purpose high frequency high sensitivity low sensitivity accelerometers may or basically a voltage mode piezoelectric accelerometers so they provide voltage output instead of the charge so this can be accomplished by incorporating the charge amplifier inside the housing of the accelerometer so they feature in three wire mode or a two wire mode so the two wire mode is also known as the integral electronics piezoelectric iepe or also known as the icp so our normal general purpose accelerometers are basically a voltage mode piezoelectric accelerometers on the other hand, the DC response accelerometers can respond down to 0 Hz. It therefore can be used to measure the static as well as the dynamic accelerations. One type of a DC accelerometer is of a capacitive type. So based on the capacitance changes in the seismic mass under the acceleration, and it is the most common technology used for the accelerometer today. So they are made popular by large commercial applications include airbag operations and mobile devices. They employ micro electromechanical systems fabrication technology which brings economy of scale to high volume applications and lower manufacturing cost. But this class has a low price capacitive accelerometers, but they are suffering from poor noise to signal to noise ratio and limited dynamic range. Another type is a piezo resistive type, which are commonly used to sensing technology for DC response accelerometers. Instead of sensing the capacitance changes in the seismic mass, a piezo resistive accelerometer produces the resistance changes in the strain gauges that are part of the uh, accelerometer seismic system. There are various characteristics of accelerometers which affect their performance. The first one is the sensitivity which is expressed in millivolt per gram and the frequency response which is expressed in hertz or CPM or RPM. And the third one is the mass of the accelerometers which is expressed in grams. Let's see what is sensitivity. So in a simple terms it is a measure of output voltage levels in response to a measured vibration levels. 
So the voltage sensitivities can vary from 0.4 millivolts per gram up to 10,000 millivolts per grams, depending upon the frequencies of interest and depending upon the application of the measurements. Then let's say if a 5 volts or generated by an accelerometer which is having a sensitivity of 100 millivolts per gram then your acceleration would be 50 G's it is as simple as that then the frequency response so the accelerometers are available in widely different frequency responses for example the frequency ranges can go from as low as 0 0.01 Hertz to 60,000 Hertz based on the applications and the mass of the accelerometer it can vary from 1 gram to 1000 grams which is it is directly proportional to the sensitivity of the accelerometer if you are having a very high sensitive accelerometers then your mass will be higher so often times you might have experienced we are using a general purpose accelerometers of 100 millivolt per G for most of our testers. So why it is so? Because there is a trade-off between the sensitivity and the frequency range. Normally, the high sensitivity accelerometers are better for measuring the lower frequencies and the low sensitive accelerometers can capture the higher frequencies accurately so our general purpose accelerometer lies somewhere in between them you know the general purpose accelerometers can be used to make over 90 percent of the measurements because of the good trade-off between the dynamic range of the sensor and the common frequency ranges of the equipment. So most of our equipment testing conditions can be suited by these general purpose accelerometers of 100 millivolt per G accelerometers. So that's the reason why in most of our tests we prefer to use 100 millivolt per G accelerometers and moreover they have more reliability when compared with the high sensitivity or low sensitivity accelerometers. Another important consideration is the mounting considerations. So as a rule of thumb, the usual bandwidth of an accelerometer is one-fifth of the mounted resonant frequency. So it is always better to have a very high mounted resonance frequency in order to get more bandwidth of the frequency. So if you see the first probe tip of a black color, we could see a very low resonance frequency which will affect our useful bandwidth so it is that's the reason why it is not recommended for uh, uh, accurate frequency measurements so followed by two pole magnet and flat magnet and adhesive mounting pads and adhesive glue mounting and stud mounting if you see the stud mount is the gives the maximum mounted resonance frequency which means it will give a more accurate frequency measurements and also it will give more bandwidth in frequency so that's the reason why all the permanent measurements are being stud mounted so if you want to get a good accuracy you need to go for a stud mounting or adhesive mounting and so on so mounting plays a key role here there is a bonus information on uh, mounting resonance some techniques like hfd shock pulse 
and spike energy demodulation so those techniques use this uh, mounting resonance in order to amplify the low level signals in the high frequency region so if you are going to select an accelerometer for a specific application so what are the important factors that need to be considered uh, let's see them one by one first one is the overall vibration levels the first and foremost question you should ask is what is what are the highest amplitude levels that i'm going to measure and followed by the frequencies of interest so at what frequencies my faults are likely to occur so if you answer these two questions you'll get an idea in selecting the range of accelerometer then then comes the frequency range so so it's basically uh, we are considering a high frequency low sensitivity for monitoring the bearings of a rolling element defects and measuring the gear mesh fault frequencies on other high frequency applications so in case of a slow speed, slow speed machinery where the frequency range is up to 0.1 to uh, 10 hertz a high sensitivity sensors are preferable so uh, however the 100 millivolt per gram the general purpose accelerometers are good and cost effective application for most of the applications as discussed earlier then comes the temperature range so the standard industrial accelerometers with built-in electronics can withstand up to 120 degrees Celsius. So if it exceeds, it could damage the electronics inside the sensor. So it is an important consideration. So in case if we are having the temperatures more than 150 degrees Celsius, so we need to prefer a charge mode accelerometer without an internal electronic electronic circuitry and a charge amplifier another important parameter to consider is the environmental factors so we need to consider the humidity level dust contaminations gases liquids or corrosive chemicals present in the environment which could possibly cause the contamination or damage in the sensor so modern day sensors are coming along with a hermetic seal standard to prevent these contaminants and avoid the entry of moisture inside the sensor. So we also may face a problem with the electrical interference where we are going to mount the sensor. So we need to ensure our sensors are electromagnetic inductive shielded all and also now modern sensors are coming along with the capability to withstand the electrostatic discharge up to 20 kilovolt the last consideration is the mounting locations so based on the space around the machine we need to consider uh, whether we need to go for a side exit sensor or a straight exit sensor to allow enough room for the cable run and in case of the places where the measurement is very inaccessible in those cases we need to prefer for a triaxial accelerometers in a single point we could measure all the three axes so another important topic is the accelerometer calibration so first of all why we need that calibration in the first place because due to the excessive heat and dropping from the height can cause the piezoelectric crystal to crack which can affect the sensitivity so that's the reason why you need a recalibration for your accelerometer so the time interval between the accelerometer calibrations are entirely down to the user and it is more specific to the uh, application so on a general purpose use like plant applications it is always recommended to recalibrate re them annually 
and however for uh, the high usage applications or if the accelerometer is being operated close to the specific limits for a long period it the interval could be a uh, shorter maybe a uh, six monthly or uh, three monthly so in case of a shock and crash test applications it is always recommended to recalibrate the sensor during each and every test so the sensor need to be calibrated if it has been known to exceed of any of its specified limitations whether it may be a temperature or excessive amplitude ranges we should go for a leak calibration let's summarize some important points of the accelerometers so based on the construction we have seen there are two types of accelerometers compression mode and shear mode accelerometers in the olden days the compression mode was the most commonly used accelerometers however the shear mode accelerometers are having a very stable output signal when measuring at a very low frequencies and it is of a smaller size and mass the only disadvantage is with it is a high cost sensors so the selection of a construction method of a sensor is less important while selecting when compared with it, its performance so as we know our most of the predictive programs include not only the normal speed machinery but also uh, low speed machinery particularly less than 200 rpm as well as the very high speed machineries like compressor etc which is having more than 10,000 rpms so it is always necessary to have a three different accelerometers handy which is a, a low frequency accelerometer and a general purpose accelerometer and a high frequency accelerometer so we know the useful bandwidth of an accelerometer is one fifth of its mounting resonance frequency so it is better to select a proper mounting method in order to get a good frequency accuracy and better diagnostics so finally the accelerometers need to be recalibrated at least annually based on the applications. Thank you very much for your time and for more videos related to condition monitoring and reliability, please subscribe to the below YouTube channel Proactive Reliability Mindset. Thank you very much.